The Global Young Scientists Summit, organized by the National Research Foundation, starts tomorrow in Singapore. Now, it's a gathering of leaders and researchers from the scientific community worldwide. One of the topics on tomorrow's agenda, decoding genetic information embedded in our DNA. And Professor Aaron Chikanova is a Nobel laureate in chemistry for discovering the key role of a small protein called ubiquitin. Well, thank you very much, um, Dr. Chikanova, for coming in. So since your groundbreaking discovery, scientists have found that the defects in the ubiquitin system is actually linked to cancer, neurodegenerative dis neurodegenerative disorders and other illnesses and because of that they've also managed to um, develop drugs to help countless people worldwide. You know, it's a great discovery. What actually led you to study protein degradation back then? Well, uh, I'm coming from Israel, a small country. At the time that I started my study, it was also a relatively poor country. And in science, uh, science is a merciless uh, profession. We had to compete with the big American sharks, with the big European sharks. So we decided to swim the opposite direction. Other than working on protein synthesis, on the genetic code that was fashionable at the time, we decided to go the other way, and that's destruction, how proteins are destroyed. Many people didn't believe that it's important. We had some signs that it is important, and the fact is that it turned out to be awfully important. That's right. So what kind of a role does personalized medicine actually play in um, today's world then? Well, personalized medicine is a big revolution that is based on basically on our own chemical composition. It's based on our DNA and then on our RNA and our proteins. And this is aberrations in one of these components leads to diseases. Until now, we treated patients according to the disease. If a patient had a breast cancer, for example, or prostate cancer, we irradiated it. We operated on the patient. Now, we want to understand why it happened. And it turns out that it's due to some mutation. And for women, certain women, it will be a mutation in gene A. And for other women, it will be a mutation in gene B. And for the third woman, it will be a different mutation. The presentation will be a tumor in the breast. But the underlying mechanism is different. And therefore, the treatment should be designed accordingly. It will not be one size fits all. We are moving from a pajama type of treatment that pajama fits all sizes into suit type. Right. Of medicine. Well, okay, speaking of that, you know, you, you've once also said that you did science because of scientific curiosity and not to actually win prizes, you know, but you obviously did win a prize. But what sparked your interest in science then? Curiosity. Just curiosity, understanding basic mechanisms of the normal human body and then of diseases. The only way to develop a drug or to develop a device, let it be imaging, CAT scan, MRI, anything, is understanding the basic mechanism. And I'm a physician, so I started with medicine, and I thought that medicine is too late. Once you have a patient to treat with a disease, it's too late. The disease is already there. I wanted to understand the underlying mechanism, how diseases start at the very beginning, and then to develop drugs, and then to prevent diseases, and so on and so forth. So for me, it was mere curiosity. So you want to start at the very beginning to nip it in the bud before I it actually develops. I think that once developed. people get disease, it's too late. Right. But you've also worked with mentors. You know, you've worked with your mentor, Professor um, Avram, as well as Erwin Rose. How important do you, would you say that mentorship and collaboration are to your scientific research? Critically important. It's like apprenticeship. It's like art. It's like playing a violin. You need to see how people are thinking, how they conceive ideas how they approach uh, problems, how they solve problems. And then, if you're a good student, and I assume, I want to believe I was, uh, you learn from them. It's like surgery, it's like any other art. Science in many ways is an art. So what would you say would make a good scientist? And you know, for tomorrow's um, event, um, what do you hope that the, the young scientists will take away from it? Well, there are many elements, like we just talked about one, we talked about mentorship. But for me, I think, and of course, you need luck. You need to be lucky, you know. But the most critically important one is passion. You need to be passionate of what you are doing. You need to really love it, not to look at the clock, just to do it out of devotion. If you are not passionate, leave it for somebody else.
Well, like you say, you know, you're out of curiosity. You did it not to win prizes, but you did win a, a laureate. The think. prize came very late. <laughs> we didn't think of it even for a moment. Well, congratulations. And thank you for coming in and speaking to us. We've been speaking with Professor Aaron Chikanova, 2004 Nobel Laureate in Chemistry. Thank you.